it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers and the question last week was my partner is in intensive care on a ventilator the intensive care team wants to do a tracheostomy and I want to have him extubated what do I do? part 7 you can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video in this week's episode of your questions answered I want to answer another question from one of our readers and the question this week is from the reader that I've consulted in the past with those questions and her question this week is my partner is in intensive care on a ventilator the intensive care team wants to do a tracheostomy and I want to have him extubated what do I do part 8 this is also the last question that I publish from Heather in this series of questions so Heather writes Hi Patrick my partner's tracheostomy is now closed up we had almost a month long stay in a long-term acute care hospital he was weaned from the ventilator and the tracheostomy and got decannulated he also received physiotherapy he has been hospitalized so long that he could barely move his lower extremities on March the 3rd he left long -term, the long-term facility and he was transferred to an inpatient rehabilitation facility where he received three hours of physiotherapy every single day. He got to come home on March the 17th. He came home with a walker and a wheelchair and we are starting outpatient rehabilitation on April the 7th. On March 26th he woke up and he had a low temperature of 38.2 Celsius. I helped him sit up and to give him his meds and I could hear him wheezing. I called an ambulance because I thought it would be too hard to get him in and out of the car. His oxygen levels were at 60%. Needless to say he had a pneumonia again. They put him on a BiPAP machine in the emergency room and sent him back to intensive care. He handled the BiPAP machine like a champion. I went home that evening and when I came back the first thing next morning the BiPAP was off and he was on oxygen and moved to a ward. He had pneumonia and his diabetes was uncomfortable and his kidneys acted up again. He's doing much better now and even walking better we think we'll be able to go home and try it again on Monday. I want you to know that finding you Patrick helped me to save my partner's life. If I hadn't been in the intensive care by his side asking questions and doing my own research then that one doctor may have been able to convince my partner's parents to pull the tube and give up my partner's mother believes you help your loved one more by staying out of the way and letting them do their job. I fear that so many families have lost loved ones because they took this approach and gave up too soon. I had never seen the inside of an intensive care unit until December and I have had the opportunity as well as misfortune to have seen the inside of four different intensive care units and I know I couldn't have survived this if I hadn't found you and your website. I realized when I came to you Patrick I was opposed to getting the tracheostomy and with your advice I made them listen and I know I probably delayed his recovery with that since he did have to have the tracheostomy after all and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I do have great respect for the intensive care team, most of them. 
I don't think it should have to be so hard to communicate with them though. These men and women have a tough job and the families they are dealing with are very often in a once in a lifetime event so they are scared, lost and confused. Knowing all of that doesn't change things though. I had to step away and collect my thoughts so that I could communicate with them. I was a weak emotional wreck at first and that made the nurses even nastier. I knew that he very well could have died and I decided that if he did die that I wasn't going to have any regrets. I wasn't going to be at his funeral and have anything going through my head about things I should have questions or details I left out. It was tough. These people are intimidating but they are only people at the end of the day. When I got the feedback from you and the courage to become more demanding and difficult such good things started happening. I didn't really find that they were big jerks. I found out these are very special people that just forget that they not only have an obligation to their patient but to the patient's family as well. Once I stopped allowing them to treat me as if I was invisible I gained their respect and they gained mine. I know that got long that I know that got along thank you so much for being here. I'm so very grateful that I found your website and that I signed up for one-on-one -on -one consulting with you and that I had direct access to you so that we had time on Skype over the phone and that you answered my emails. I have told other families I have come across about your website. Thank you so much Heather. Hi Heather. Thank you so much Heather for your extremely valuable and detailed feedback, insights and also for your kind words. I'm very glad to hear that your partner is finally turning the corner. This is a huge success story and as you know and I know life is extremely precious and it's something that I'm hugely aware of after more than 15 years as an intensive care nurse. I knew that when you first contacted me that you needed help and as you've correctly pointed out having a loved one critically ill in intensive care is a once in a lifetime situation and most families in intensive care don't take the time to do their own research and they don't seek out for help and advice. You have been there and you know how important it is to get educated quickly about this complex area that is intensive care. You are also correct to point out that intensive care teams have a difficult job and that most of them are very special people. What families in intensive care don't know though is that there are way too many things and too many moving parts and wheels in motion in intensive care that families simply don't know anything about. The stuff that's happening behind the scenes in intensive care such as the politics, the bad, the bad management issues, the hierarchy, the power play etc. almost always have a huge impact into how the intensive care teams team frames or positions your loved ones prognosis and diagnosis. Furthermore intensive care teams are like fish in water and families in intensive care on the other hand are like fish out of water. That means that intensive care teams often forget that as you once again correctly pointed out need to communicate better and appropriately with families who are completely outside of their comfort zone when they're having a loved one critically ill in intensive care. I do strongly believe that empowering families in intensive care is what I and intensivecarehotline.com stands for and as you know it has a positive impact. You also should take the time to reflect and also celebrate this massive success story of getting your partner out of intensive care alive. You have also shown to have incredible resilience and incredible strength as once again you were so far outside of your comfort zone when you first contacted me that it most likely was an absolute nightmare for you. I want to thank you once again for being a client 
and also for taking the time for giving me your feedback in such great detail. Families in intensive care need to support each other and your experience, your resilience and your strength are an amazing example for other families of how to overcome extreme adversity. Your authenticity by having lived through such a massive challenge is setting an extremely positive example for other families in intensive care. I also want to thank you once again for recommending me and intensivecarehotline.com to other families in intensive care. So how can you get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind-the-scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call us. Find our phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also check out our product section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also got, get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.